I wanted to preface this by saying some of you don't know that Elvis had stepbrothers, the Stanley brothers. It was uh, Ricky, David, and Billy. Vernon married their mother, Dee, in 1960. They got divorced in 1977. But these guys grew up at Graceland. You can see these kids. Billy was seven years old when they moved to Graceland. And Billy was the oldest, and this is them at Graceland. You recognize it with Vernon. They grew up with Elvis. This is uh, Ricky on the left and David on the right and Elvis. And then this is Billy. We're going to talk to Billy. We're going to ride around. He's going to show us some places and some things that happen. And we're going to reveal some stories. And later, I'm going to film with him again. We've got an idea of a story that we're going to do. Will not be in these episodes, but this is part of one of three. And I introduce you here to Billy Stanley, and I will not tolerate haters. If all you can do is hate, you might as well move on. This is a family, friends, and a lot of you have opinions about these people. You have opinions about uh, other Memphis Mafia members, Elvis's family members. This is not the forum for that. If you want to have opinions about that kind of stuff, you can do it on your forums. I don't tolerate it on mine. If you've got a problem with that, you can unsubscribe right now. doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I don't tolerate it. If that's all you can bring to the table is hate, you might as well just move on. I don't want it here, won't accept it, and you will be blocked. Thank you for listening to this. So, friends, I introduce you to the one and only Billy Stanley. Not Billy Shears, Billy Stanley. Billy Stanley. <laughs> what's up? I said the one and only, like the one and only Billy Shears. Oh, what's, what's going happening on, with my you, brother? Man? Everything is beautiful. How about you? Uh, another day in paradise. Yeah, that guy, it's interesting. The guy up there in that Cadillac is a uh, probably a black man about 60 years old. Uh -huh. And he is out there writing a note to Elvis on the sidewalk. Oh, okay, yeah, I saw somebody on the ground. I yep, you'll know. see him. He's out there writing a note there. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is... Yeah, look at that right there. I'm going to pull out, and then we'll go down and turn around yeah. and make our little trip here. And do kind of a... Yeah, there, I can take you to when we first moved here in the 60s. Elvis was really into these uh, remote-controlled, radio-controlled airplanes. Yeah. And I can take you to the church where he used to go flying. Really? Yeah. I didn't know he flew those. I know uh, Roy Orbison does. Did? Yeah, he did. I for, did not just know for that. a little short, short time. But he would go into things and then just get, you know, yeah, I got he, enough of that and go to bad, something else. You yeah. Know. There was a song that was a hit back in the early '70s called "Don't Hand Me No Boogie Woogie" because I'm a king of rock and roll. Yeah. And we played it for Elvis one time, and he loved it. So I mean, that's all he. Sometimes he just walked through the house. Don't hand me no boogie woogie because I'm a king of rock and roll. <laughs> okay, Elvis. <laughs> he loved it. I'm trying to remember who did the song, but you can find it on YouTube. Yeah, I have to look that up. That's the title of the so song. So he listened to that? Oh, yeah. My brothers and I turned him on to it. So did you go to Whitehaven? No, nah, I went to Hillcrest. You went to Hillcrest. Now, do you want to see where he flew the planes real Yeah, quick? absolutely. Okay, it's not too far yeah, from Yeah, anything me. you're willing to show me, let's show me. This is where he... This is the shopping center when he, we first moved into Graceland. He had the stores opened up, and this is it's on the other side of this McDonald's. We'll even pull up in there. So basically, y'all stayed in this yeah, area. Yeah, this, this area right here was pretty much ours. Okay, all this shopping center right here, it used to be go down a little bit further. They've torn it down, but this is where Elvis would come and get, uh, got all the toys and stuff for us. Mm -hmm. When we first moved here, it was in this shopping center right here. And is this low, where Lowenstein's was? No, Lowenstein's is down this way. Okay, I so just, what was the store that was here? I'm trying to, like, it was some kind of department store. I can't really remember. And Lowenstein's was right here on this, on this side of the Okay. Right and then the movie theater is right there on that corner. Yeah, where the parking lot is, yeah. yeah. That's the front. So where, what would he buy at Lowenstein's? What was that? That's where he would come, like Christmas shopping okay. for people. This was a bigger shopping area right here. And so, but Lowenstein's, 
we kind of knew the people that ran it, the Lowensteins, mm -hmm. so they would open it up for us, and then he would go in there and buy clothes for everybody. Okay. I'll take you the back way, and then I can show you the houses that yeah. we had, because everybody gets confused on those. Yeah, two. I'm interested, too, in when when uh, Vernon and your mom divorced. Your mom stayed in the Dolan house, and right. he got another house. Right. I can where, show you where you that, know that yeah. house? Yeah, okay. I can show you where it's at. Okay. Because I figured you would know that. Now, y'all were living in the apartment at Graceland, at where the garage was. Well, yeah, well, he, Elvis wanted us to stay there. Contra uh, that's why the apartment was built, okay. for us to stay there. But did Vernon ever live in that apartment, or did he stay in the house until he passed? Uh, he, he, bought, he bought the house from my mom back. Oh, did she he? Got it, yeah, she got it in the divorce. Okay. But he lived at another house for a period of time. Yeah. When did they divorce? 76? It was, no, it was 70. It was right after Elvis passed away. Oh, 77 then. Okay. Yeah. Because Elvis called me, Ricky, and David to his bedroom one day and was asking us, okay, I'm, I know you know what's going on with mom and dad. And we said, yeah. He said, what are you guys going to do? And we just kind of looked at each other and said, what do you mean? He said, I, we said, well, we've been with you this long. We're not going to quit now. I mean, you know, he said, good. That's what I wanted to hear. He said, I'll make sure your mom's taken care of and everything. And, okay. You know, that's great. You know, that's between mom and dad, not us. Exactly. You know, I, we'd already spent that much time with him. I mean, what are we going to do? Leave? No. So, you know, of course, the Dolan house. Yeah, I know so the I'm Dolan gonna show you, house. When we first moved there, there were some people living there. They even sued us because they said our dog uh, bit their son, mm -hmm. but actually the, their son was playing with it. It, had, it was a chain link fence, and he got up close and he cut his eye on the fence because the dog couldn't put his nose through, the, <laughs> through yeah. that. Well, uh, what happened originally was... The boy, they've painted it. Thing. Yeah, they painted it. But see, this is the house when Vernon finally said, okay, we need to move out. This is the house right here they bought. Elvis bought for us. Okay. It, it was gray back then. So y'all lived here first. No, we never moved in this house. We Elvis bought it for us, but Vernon traded because he always liked corner lots mm -hmm. because he said it's more land. So we never moved in this house, but that's the one that Elvis bought us. I'll slow down. Okay, so that's 3655. And so this is where he traded with the realtor for this house right here. Okay. Because it had a corner lot and, you know, it, we just liked the way it was laid out. And Priscilla, well, that, there's that famous picture of... Her standing on the front porch. Yeah, yeah. Her, with her and her dad are standing up on the front porch with my mom. And, you know, they, okay, this is where she's going to live. Well, <laughs> It didn't last long. It, maybe three or four days. Yeah, really? That fast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was at no time. And this is Elvis Cove. Can you believe that? Yeah. Changed it to Elvis Cove. When we first moved in there, that's where he would come and park the limo right there in front of the house at around midnight and pick me and my brothers up to go to the movies or fairgrounds with him. That wasn't going to change just because we was living in another house. No, he said they're going with me. So where did y'all stay when you were staying at Graceland? In that little apartment. Oh, so that apartment was built that, prior to 70 then? That was built in 1960. Really? I yeah. did not know that. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's there a long time. Yeah. We were, that's, that was built for us to live there. Oh, what am I saying 70? I meant 60. Okay. Yeah, it was 1960. Okay, so it was built specifically so y'all could stay there. Then they decided to go and... Well, back then, when Elvis would come home, there was a, it was a lot more easier access to get to Elvis back then. You know, it, all you got to do is, if the guard knew you or whatever, you know, just, okay, yeah, come on up. But, you know, Elvis is home, back from making a movie, so... And there was, like, a party every night. And so my mom was going... This is no way for my sons, you know, they got to go to school. And, you know, that's when Elvis said, oh, I don't worry too much about school. You know, I'm going to give them an education. So. <laughs> and he yeah. meant that, didn't he? 
Yeah. Well, she, my mom, I remember the, one of the, you know, discussions they had, it was almost like an argument. They was, you know, but Elvis, I wanted to go to college and be doctors and lawyers. And that's when Elvis just looked at her and said, I have doctors and lawyers working for me. That's nothing. You know, like he was downplaying, you know. Yeah. And we, my brothers and I, we were groomed from the very moment we walked in, I mean, stepped through those gates to be part of the family business, which was Elvis. So that's what we was going to, that was going to be our jobs growing up. But I wanted to be a mechanic and I had other ideas. So this church right here is where we come and Elvis got into these remote control airplanes. Okay. We can pull in here because they're just all kind of grown up. But th see how clear the space was? Because yeah. you couldn't do it at Graceland because we had those trees there. But this was just enough open space right here because this is about as far as you could actually fly them back in the day. And this was our little, land, well, supposed to land and take off space right here. Yeah. But usually they ended up crashing, you know. It was so. more crashing than, than flying, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, we'd be standing out here and then Elvis would try to dive bomb us and, you know, with the plane, <laughs> you know, but sometimes he would, but then it would hit the ground and break and then that would be the end of it. Those things are hard to fly. Yeah, well. A lot harder than the drone. We didn't have anybody teach, he didn't have anybody teach him how to do it. He just got into it and then he bought this one Corsair and it was kind of high dollar, I guess, about $250 for an airplane. And he bought that and brought it out here. And then he, when he tore that one up, that was it. He said, that's no more of this. Mm. And it, it first started out where with the little strings, you had it when, yeah. when you did crack like, it up and then spin. Yeah, well, this is where we'd do that. And then he got the remote control planes. Because that was the remote control was early. That was oh, the yeah. time at the time. Uh -huh. Where would y'all set up? Where would y'all stand? Right here. You can get out if you want to. Yeah. Okay. So this parking lot is very similar to the way it was back then as far as... Yeah, it hadn't changed anything. Okay. But we'd get right here about in the center of it because this was... It, you really didn't need a long space, but when we was doing the circle planes, it'd be right, well, we'd get a little bit further away from that, so it'd probably be right about here. we could just fly like this, you know. Yeah. Get busy doing that now. But he would just fly right around in here? Yeah. And just enjoy it? Yeah, because... That, your signal so this was just perfect spot right here to do it and he would never get near the building so we, he'd just do all the flying right in through here but it'd be funny we'd be standing here and he he got pretty good at it a little bit because he we'd see it coming and all of a sudden we'd know okay we'd have to duck because he'd start diving at us <laughs> well, oh, you know. was there ever anybody hit or accidents did you remember no 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 he wouldn't do that with a plane because somebody could get hurt getting hit with one of those but i mean he wouldn't even get that low to the ground really it may be about 10 but if feet it's taller. coming at you though yeah 10 you don't... feet taller you don't know yeah. does he have control of it or not <laughs> <laughs> so, so you take off you know, running take off running that's funny and he'd laugh you know oh yeah so that all happened right here, friends. So how did he choose this spot? Do you know he just remembered it was around here, it was close? Somebody, I don't know, I was just seven years old at the time, okay. so I was just- So this would have been 60 then, when yeah. you first, okay. That lasted until about 61. Okay. Very cool. He tore up that last plane, that was it. He said, okay, Had no, enough. More, no more of this. What were you doing in, uh, after you graduated high school, what was your job with him? Did you have a specific job? Uh, personal aid. Yeah, but not like valet, like Dean? Or because well, you were, y'all were brothers? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, pretty much, we, we all started off, me, Ricky, and David, all three started off, Rick stayed personal aid, I was personal aid, I was kind of like um, whatever Elvis wanted me to do. I mean, if he needed something or something like that, you know, he'd just say, Billy, go get this. Okay. 
and that was my job. Uh, I made sure his, clo his dry cleaning was done on the jumpsuits when we was out on the road because they'd be soaked. And it, they, I mean, just the jumpsuit itself was felt like it's almost 20 pounds and then after you took it off when it was soaked with sweat felt like just lead weight so it, could, would it, regular dry cleaners were able to handle that mm-hmm hmm. but since how we had to do it was we'd rotate when we knew we was gonna be spending the night in the city mm -hmm. then that's when I would get it and say okay it's got to be done in that, like an hour or so and I said okay so we would get that done uh, in the beginning I know he was very afraid of flying mm -hmm. towards the end he flew a lot right you know so he got over his fear of flying and started trusting the the uh, airplanes clearly yeah it, it took him a while I mean because back in the 60s he would go back and forth and he had like he had a first he had a uh, motorhome was, right it was a Greyhound bus double decker okay and converted over to like a RV, and then he got the then he got the Dodge RV. Okay, see, I thought it was the other way—the Dodge RV first, and then the bus second. He probably was. Okay. Whatever happened to the Dodge RV? You reckon? I heard <laughs> it was in Florida somewhere. Well, they were in Vegas, and uh, they was a, they were going back to L.A. I gotta get over here. They were going to L.A. Drive it back. And it was Lamar's job to make sure it had gas in it. Well, they ran out of gas outside of uh, Vegas. And Elvis was mad, and he said, Okay, Lamar, take your fat butt and go get some gas. And we got, they got somebody, picked him up, and they come, he, was, he came back not too long afterwards, and they put however much gas it was. And when they got to the gas station, the awning was kind of low. And Elvis drove it up under that thing, and it sheared the top back a little ways. And so that was the end of that. So it's, that motorhome was like, they, what happened? They get out and get a car and go? Or? Yeah, they had to get somebody, you know, rent some cars or fly out. So that RV ended up in a junkyard, most likely. Uh-huh. 